What up world? What up Seven Cups family? Welcome back to my channel. The day has finally come that I get to share my testimony with you. What is a testimony? You might be thinking. Testimony is an eyewitness account. As a Christian, as a child of God, and as a woman of God, I consider myself a witness to Jesus moving and being alive. So I want to share my story with you guys from beginning to now of how God has been faithful in my life and what he has done, what he's brought me through, and let's get into it. <laughs> my story starts before me with my parents. Now, I was born to parents who were not married out of wedlock, and I think that's an important part of my story because my family wasn't perfect from the beginning. It wasn't the way that God intended families to be from the jump, right? When I got a little older, I started to realize why my parents weren't so close. It was sort of normal for my parents to not talk to each other or not even be in the same room as each other. I mean, yeah, they would be together and, you know, laugh together once in a while, but I didn't see a unity in them, like, on a consistent basis. And when I got a little bit older, I realized that there were actually affairs going on that kept my parents separated and my parents even lived separately on and off. Sometimes they would both be in our house, sometimes one would be living elsewhere and the affairs also led to hostility, anger, and also domestic violence. So I've always grown up going to church with my family on Sundays and I'm actually very fortunate to have had that upbringing. But but what bothered me and what didn't sit right with me was that while everything was going on at home, it bothered me that no one in the church knew. It seemed like we would go to church and pretend like everything was great. There wasn't really a congruency between my home life and my church life. It was like we went to church on Sundays and we worshiped God and we learned a little bit about the Bible, but no one really knew us. No one knew what was going on at home. And even at home, we didn't read the Bible together. We didn't pray together. Maybe sometimes before meals, but not like really relying on God for everything, for all of our needs. So I didn't really see God in every part of my life, only on Sundays. And I also didn't see a lot of people who had the same background as me or who I could really relate to at the church. Our church was pretty much all Asian. Almost everyone at the church, with a few exceptions, were Asian, and I just didn't think that was representative of the world or even the other parts of my life. Like, for example, my school was very diverse and I had friends who were like of all different backgrounds and it just seemed like everything that we did with the church was with other Asian people and I didn't think that was representative of the kingdom of God either but I am very thankful that I was introduced to spiritual things even at a young age. The times that I really experienced the presence of God and when I first really met Jesus was on mission trips that our youth group would go on with an organization called YWAM, which stands for Youth with a Mission. <laughs> I remember I used to, when my friends would ask me what I was doing in the summer when I would go away to the mission trips, I was even kind of embarrassed to say that I was going on a mission trip. I would say I'm going to church camp, like my parents are forcing me to go to church camp because no one, I went to a public school, a very large public school, and no one was openly Christian. Like I didn't know any Christians who were at school. The only Christians I knew were at church. So we went on mission trips every summer, which I actually enjoyed. We would not be allowed to have phones or anything, and we would serve people, do different service projects. We would share the gospel on the street. We would just have prayer times and worship times in the morning and at night. Those were the first times that I was encouraged to do personal daily devotions with God, and that means just me getting away alone with God, just praying or just looking around at nature or or journaling or reading my Bible. The first time that I ever felt the Holy Spirit really move was this one night 
on a YWAM trip where we were worshiping and we worshiped every night. But on this particular night, we kind of went an extended time. Most of the group had already gone to bed because it was our usual bedtime, but a few of us just stayed in the room and just felt like worshiping a little bit more, like singing a few more songs. I think YouTube was around, so we pulled up the lyrics to songs on YouTube and then put them on this old school projector and we just were singing along with the songs and then this one song came on that I didn't recognize. I didn't know it from just the music that started playing in the beginning so I just sat there kind of like feeling the music with my eyes closed as the music kept playing I just out of my heart I just started singing the name of Jesus to the song I just sing his name Jesus Jesus I don't even know how the song goes to this day but after the long intro those were actually the words of the song and in that moment I just felt so overwhelmed like the Holy Spirit was leading me in the song that I didn't even know and so that's really the first time like when I say I met this man when I was 12 years old that was the moment when I first met Jesus and I first encountered the Holy Spirit move in me. But yeah, other than the mission trips in, in the summertime, like I said, I didn't really encounter God at home or at school or in anything else that I did. And so my faith wasn't really that strong back then. So tensions in my house, you know, when things aren't solved, they tend to get worse. So it came to a point in my household where, okay, fighting was normal. I was used to at night when my parents thought that I had fallen asleep probably, or maybe I even did fall asleep for a while, but then I would wake up and hear soft, sometimes loud arguing downstairs. That was happening more and more frequently to the point where it was every night. I could hear my parents fighting from a distance. Part of me didn't want to hear what was going on because I just wanted to go to sleep and just ignore it. It wasn't my problem. It was between them, not me. But then the other part of me, of course, was listening just to make sure that nothing Thing serious broke out. It was like I didn't want to hear it, but I was listening intently at the same time. And I just felt in those moments so powerless and I felt afraid. I felt alone. And so the night that I really turned away from God was one of those nights that I heard fighting going on downstairs and I cried out to God. And I said, God, if you are real, then why is this happening? Can you make this stop? Can you make them stop fighting? If you're real, why do I feel so alone right now? Why do I feel so scared if you're my protector? So I cried out to God and what happened was silence. Now looking back, I realized that that silent moment was God telling me to wait. I can't just make it go away right now. There were a lot of things that had to unravel between my parents until there was peace between them. But in that moment, when God said, wait, I took that as he wasn't there or he didn't exist or he didn't care. So that night, I resolved in my heart that God wasn't real. I called myself an atheist from that point on and I lost all self-control really because up until that point, like for example, many boys tried to take my virginity and I knew that it wasn't right. But after I turned away from God, I started saying yes to the things of the world. I started thinking, okay, let's check this out and see what the world has to offer. So at that point, I did lose my virginity. I did start doing drugs, going to raves that I wasn't even old enough probably to be at, drinking. I started drinking at this point, alcohol every weekend for sure. Yeah, that was when I was in high school. Um, that was around the age of 16, 17, so like my junior to senior year, and I just stopped caring. I became really disrespectful to my parents, and I started to just have very disrespectful behavior. I would say sneak boys into my house. Um, I would stay out all night. I would borrow my parents' car. I mean, how ridiculous does this sound? Borrowing my parents' car to go out and then not answering their calls and not coming home all night and not bringing their car home when they need the car to go to work in the morning. Screaming arguments with my parents. Just was very disrespectful towards them and I did not honor them. Even after high school led to 
reckless behavior and dangerous behavior on my behalf, being sexually promiscuous, drunk driving, doing harder drugs, hanging out with people who do drugs and sell drugs led to a lot of dangerous behavior too, like getting raped, honestly, even though it's someone that I knew I was on drugs and didn't consent, you know, stuff like that. Because, you know, when you hang out with drug dealers and when you do drugs, you get drugged. You see what I'm saying? Blacking out was typical for me. Sometimes I would wake up the next morning in my bed not knowing, not a clue how I got there, which is really scary. I mean, and I didn't, at the time, I didn't thank God for that. I didn't think that that was God. I just said, whew, let's do it again tonight, <laughs> you know? But looking back, like God saved me from so many dangerous situations. I think I knew I hit rock bottom by the third or fourth time that I hit rock bottom. When I found myself uh, yet again in a doctor's office or at home getting a call from the doctor that I tested positive again for chlamydia. And it was so weird because like it was always that, it was always the same one, the same STD. It was like I got that one and then I would get the, um, it's a bacterial infection so it's cured by um, antibiotics. It's like then I would take the antibiotics, be healed, <laughs> but then I didn't change my ways. It happened again, it happened again. And that's when I really realized that my life was out of control, like my life was out of my hands because that is a disease that could have potentially really messed up my body. Having it for a long time undetected, it compromises women's ability, fertility. So just putting myself in really dangerous situations, putting my health and my own life at risk, it was getting really bad. And so around this time is when I met my husband. I always say that my husband is the first real Christian that I ever met because the Christians that I was used to like, I would only see them on Sundays. We wouldn't talk or hang out outside of church. They didn't know the secrets that I had. They didn't know about what was, what was going on in my home and didn't ask either about how I, was, how I was really doing. When I met my husband, I had stopped going to church like for a long time. But the reason that I say that he's the first Christian that I ever met is because just by talking to him and getting to know him and watching him move and just staying in touch really and, and seeing, keeping up with what was going on in his life, I could see the hand of God on him. And I could see how his outlook on the world and the way that he treated people and the way that he loved people was different. Like, I remember he told me this one story about how he was driving by a car that had crashed into the water, like off of a bridge or something, into a body of water, and he jumped into the water to save the people from inside of the car, and I thought, whoa. I don't know anyone who would do that, who would care enough, who would love enough, who would have that much compassion. People would always want to give him free stuff. Like he just had favor from God and man. And I recognize that. And also around the time that I met my husband, I was actually living with um, three other girls and two of them were Christians as well and so I, I knew that um, like you know they would just casually talk about God or going, talk about going to church or you know they would leave the house and they went to a Bible study but now looking back again I see that God was surrounding me with Christians he was surrounding me with his people so that I would come back to him <laughs> And so after I started getting to know my husband and we started dating, well, my now husband, and we started dating and, you know, we were just talking every day, my heart was 
softening. I was beginning to see the way that these people lived and the way that my husband lived versus the way I was living. And I, I looked at my life and I did not like it. I did not like what I was seeing. I did not like the relationships that I was having and failing at. I didn't like the unrest that I had. I, I didn't like the yearning that I had for the wrong things that were so temporary. Around this time, I also started having bad trips. I remember I did Molly one time at the uh, gay parade in Chicago, and that day, it was like the last time I did Molly. It was a bad trip, first of all, but then I, I just remember sitting at home, crashing. I, I just remember sitting at home at the end of the day, while I was coming down from it and I was laying on the couch crying because it was like it had robbed me of all of my joy and given me a temporary fake joy and I just started to recognize that I wasn't satisfied with that and that wasn't good enough and that this can't be all there is this can't be the best feeling in the world this cannot be the ultimate joy or satisfaction there must be a better way and so I I started giving God a chance. So I think the first thing that I did was I actually found this book in a bookstore. It was this cute little book. Um, it was like about this big and so it was like travel size so I took it with me on the train when I was riding the train or the bus commuting to work or school and I would read it and it was a little book that was just the book of Psalm and Song of Solomon, I believe. And the title of it was like, The Books of Divine Poetry. Because I was really, in, I've always been into poetry. I've always been writing poetry, reading it, studying it. And so I bought it. And I knew that it was from the Bible, but I bought it because it was this poetry book. And so I read uh, Song of Solomon and I read Psalm. And that was the first book of the Bible that I started reading, even though it was just on my commute, like whatever, however many minutes that might be, like maybe 30 minutes and, you know, I'm not really focused on it because there's so much going around, going on around me on the bus or the train. And that's how I started reading the Bible. And then soon enough I started going back to church with my parents they had been going to this church for a few years already uh, my brother too but I started going with them and I honestly can't tell you what those early sermons were about I don't really remember them I just I liked being there I just liked the presence that was there, which now I know is the presence of God. And I liked how friendly everybody was. Everybody hugged each other and greeted each other and like looked each other in the eyes. And I just liked being there. That's really all it was. I just liked being there. And so that went on for like about two years. I went to church with my parents. I didn't really like talk to anyone at the church or make friends because I just wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to having relationships with people in the church outside of the church. And looking back, I see now that that was a time that my relationship with my parents was restored after so much like arguing with them and avoiding them and lying to them. I just spent quality time with them, had honest conversations with them. So my relationship with my parents was really restored during that time. So for like about two years, um, every Sunday, they would pick me up from my college apartment. We would go to church and then we would have lunch and they would take me grocery shopping and then drop me back off at my apartment. And that was my Sunday for a couple years. I started seeing changes in myself, totally good. God. For example, knowing that I have church on Sundays made me behave better, I guess, on like Saturday nights and on the weekends. Like I remember this one time, this boy called me at, it was, it had to be like maybe 1 a.m. It was this boy that I had had a crush on for like two years and asked me, what am I doing at my home? Basically, can you come over? I mean, I considered it and I thought about it in my head. But, you know, and I actually like entertained him I'm like, well, who are you with? He said, I'm with two friends, but I'll just come by myself. I said, well, I kind of have to get up early in the morning because I had to go to church on, on Sunday morning, the next morning at 10 a.m. And he said, oh no, it's okay. Like I'll, I'll leave at like 5 a.m. I'll leave early. 
I said, you know what? No, I have to go to church in the morning. I don't think I actually said that, but I, bottom line is I just, I said no. So yeah, just going to church was something that was, I just knew was positive in my life. I started to experience even supernatural things during this time. The first time I picked up an actual Bible, like, so after I was done reading Psalm, I just, I wanted to continue reading. So I actually grabbed my childhood Bible that I had had since the youth group. I can't tell you where I reached to find it, but at that time I knew where it was. I knew that I hadn't gotten rid of the Bible that I had as a kid. So I just picked up that Bible and I just continued from after Psalm, just in the order that the books go. And I finished the Old Testament and then I read the whole New Testament and then I went back to Genesis and like read up until Psalm and next thing you know I had read the whole Bible in like two years but I remember even the first time that I sat down to read the Bible intentionally like not part of a commute I remember I was visiting my mom for Thanksgiving me and my brother visited her and after my brother went to sleep and after my mom went to sleep I went to sit on the couch. I turned on the light and I opened my Bible for the first time. It was like the first time that I made time for God, that I made space for him to speak to me. I'll never forget it. The very moment that I sat down and opened my Bible to read it right there, I was like sitting on her couch and right next to the couch, like right here, is um, was like a sliding door to her porch. I remember when I sat down and just opened the book, I heard like that clearly coming from the glass door, like right here. And this was at night and my mom lives in a gated community. And so I froze. After a few moments, I peeked outside to see if there was someone knocking there and there was nobody, nobody in sight. I mean, it was late at night. It was probably like around midnight or something. Um, and so I went to the room and I got my mom up and I said, mom, do you, do you think any of your neighbors would have knocked on your door? And she said, it's weird. I don't know. But anyways, she went back to bed, I read my Bible, and the next day she asked all of her friends and neighbors in the complex, um, did, did you knock on my um, patio door last night? And they said no. The Bible says that God knocks on the door of your heart. And I believe that at that moment, that was God knocking on the door of my heart because it was the first time that I that I had made room and space for him and I. I just started seeking God more. Another very spiritual thing that happened to me was when I stopped drinking cold turkey. Um, I definitely had a drinking problem. I was drinking not only on the weekends, but I was drinking on weekdays, even if it's just like wine with dinner. Wine with dinner would turn into a couple more glasses even after dinner. Definitely was turning into a different person. And at this point, like I had stopped doing a lot of the other drugs that I was frequently doing. Like I wasn't doing acid anymore. I wasn't doing Xanax anymore, ecstasy anymore, but I was still drinking because is drinking is just a socially acceptable thing and so I was still doing it and it was a problem. The day that I stopped drinking, the last time that I ever got drunk was actually at a Kendrick Lamar concert. The reason that this was the last time that I drank and why this was the day that I saw how big of a problem it actually was um, and Carlos had commented several times that I had a drinking problem, but I kind of didn't want to listen to him. But the day that I decided not to drink was at the Kendrick Lamar concert. And the reason that I understood finally that day was because I missed the entire concert. We had really good seats too, and like the lower level of the United Center, which is a big basketball stadium. We had we were in the lower level, and I just I was so drunk. I looked around and just saw all the people and got very overwhelmed. I started crying. 
and what I wanted to leave I needed to leave and this was during the opening act still so me and Carlos had to leave the concert missed the concert I paid a lot of money for those tickets Miss, we missed the concert but even worse than that I experienced demon possession while we were walking away from the stadium and I don't remember this at all but well I, me I remember some of it I remember kind of like just wanting to leave and being just really pumped up but Carlos told me afterwards that I was pushing him away but I was also saying save me like help me save me as if the real me inside was like searching for help and so I realized that day that alcohol is a hell of a drug <laughs> it is just not good so um yeah that was that was really big for me um just ending a lot of the substance abuse problems that I had. Carlos and I, we also were living together at this time. We were dating, we were living together because that's what the world says that you should do. We were going to church together, but God was still correcting us. It got to the point where there was just so much tension between us. We were fighting every day and it was like, we were either gonna break up or get married. <laughs> I actually wanted to serve at the church. I wanted to serve with the kids because I have a heart for kids. And it was a conversation with the leader of the kids ministry at our church who advised me to stop living with Carlos, stop living with my boyfriend, because even though the world tells you that that's okay and that it's the next step in your relationship, she told me that it's not what God wanted and that we shouldn't be living together until we're married, unless we're married, because other than that, I belong to Jesus and not him. It was really hard because we were in the middle of our lease. I didn't know where to go, who I could move in with, but a couple days later, my grandfather calls me and he's just really upset talking about how he wants to sell the house and so I asked him if I could move in and so I was able to move out um, and not live with Carlos anymore. I moved into my grandparents' house and this was a time when I realized that God really had to do work in me. Like it was great that I was with Carlos who's a man of God um, but still we were living in sin by living together and I was sort of driving, dragging him down but we were also just dragging each other down um, and holding each other back by not living God's way. And so around the same time too, I remember I cried out to God again. <laughs> so honestly and in surrender, I cried out to God and just said, look, Lord, I like this boy, but honestly, if he's not the man that you have for me, will you let me know? Will you take him away? Because I like him and everything, but I want your will more. So if this man is not going to be my husband, will you take him away? Will you just take him away? Because I know that your plan is going to be better than my plan. Your ways are higher than my ways. That day that I said that prayer, Carlos came home from work and I met him at the door. And the first thing that he said to me was, I want to marry you. We just created physical boundaries so that we could dedicate ourselves to God and just really establish our individual relationships with God before we came together again, which would be when we got married. I still can't believe that I even got married. I didn't deserve it. I felt like Paul when he said I, I was the worst of these. Like I really felt like I was the worst of these. I felt like I didn't deserve to get married. but. It just shows how good God is, how faithful he is, how much he wants to give us the desires of our heart when our heart aligns with his heart. Here we are. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much if you're still here, if you listen to the end. God is still writing my story um, and he's also writing your stories and he can use whatever situation you're in 
it's not irreversible for God. Like nothing is too hard for God. He leaves the 99 sheep to go after the one that has strayed. He can use what the enemy meant for evil in your life, he can use for good. I gave my life to Jesus. I got baptized on December 3rd, 2017, and I've been free. I've been full of joy. I've joined the family of God. The church that I started going to with my parents, I still go to that church. I'm a member of that church. I serve with that church, and I've been a part of some really powerful events and ministries there, and I'm just so looking forward to even more of what God is going to do. God's given me mission in my life. He's given me purpose. He's given me salvation in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. Jesus died for me, but also for you. He died on the cross for your sins, but he was raised on the third day in power over sin and death so that you too can die to your own sin and live for righteousness. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Leave me a comment. DM me on Instagram. I would love to talk to you more, but until then, just know that you are worth a lifetime.